Then we'll do an overview of the courses. So um, me and Vivi will, will take different elements of that. So we're gonna start off focusing on the intellectual developmental disabilities, autism studies and analysis and intellectual developmental, analysis and intervention, sorry, in intellectual developmental disabilities courses. After this point, we'll have, uh, we'll break for questions and answers related to those courses. And anyone who is only interested in those courses um, is, is welcome to, to leave after this point. And then we'll focus on the applied behaviour analysis and positive behaviour support courses. And again, we'll have some Q&A after that. Um, there will be a survey that you will get if you stay until the end of the webinar. It will um, come at the end of the webinar. If not, then you will receive it in an email afterwards. And we'd be really grateful if you could fill that out just about how you learned about the webinar and how you found the webinar just so that we can you know, improve, improve things for the future, really. Okay, so um, who are we at the Zula Centre? So we, okay. um, so we kind of, um, we sit within the University of Kent, as I'm guessing that you <laughs> have already realised. Um, we're part of the Division of Law, Society and Social Justice. And within that, there is a School of Social Policy, Sociology and Social Research. We sit within the School of Social Policy, Sociology and Social Research, as it is our centre. So we have 15 academic staff and all the academic staff generally have some form of professional background. So we've come from services or we have experience of working in various different services, maybe education, maybe health and social care, maybe uh, we have clinical psychologists, speech and language therapists and so on. Um, so that's the academic staff. We also have a, a team of research assistants and of course, lots of postgraduate and PhD students. So the Tizard Centre was founded in the 1980s by Jim Mansell, um, and we have a national and international reputation of excellence in the field of intellectual and developmental disabilities um, and autism, in that we, we, have, um, we do significant work around research consultancy and teaching in that field, which I'll, I'll go through in a minute. We're one of only a small number of academic groups in the UK that specialise in um, IDD and autism, so we're relatively unique in, in that respect. So our focus is, is quite broad within that group. So we, we focus on children, young people and adults with intellectual developmental disabilities and autism. We focus in a range of, of different areas. So essentially any area that uh, might be relevant for that group of individuals, we potentially would be doing some work in. So examples are health, psychology, social care and education. Topics, again, relatively broad, um, and we all have various different interests within the academic staff, but the, the common ones are challenging behaviour, mental health difficulties, offending behaviour, physical health relationships, inclusion, education and service settings. We also have a big emphasis on supporting individuals who support people with IDD or autism, so family carers, staff, services and improving quality in services across the board. Um, so I was just talking about the topics that we cover. So we, we have a third stream um, about developing services, organisations and cultures that support these groups. So they might be supporting individuals with IDD or autism directly, or they might be supporting staff or family carers and involved in training and that kind of thing. Um, we have a very applied focus in the majority of our work. So anything that we do, we are aiming to make an impact on practice in the real world. So we're very applied and very focused on improving um, service support and quality of life for individuals with IDD and autism. So what exactly do we do? How do we do that? Well, we have four main areas of work, as I kind of mentioned earlier. So obviously we do a lot of teaching. We teach postgraduate students, we run taster sessions, and we also do lots of training for services. Um, and the idea is that we, we're trying to um, train the sort of next generation of practitioners in best practice and, and most current practice. We also do a lot of consultancy and some of our training comes under that. The main areas of consultancy we do at the moment, although it does tend to vary, is autism diagnosis work, positive behaviour support work, you know, training and direct support, active support, again, training and direct support, staff and school training and court work. Then we um, try and influence policy as well through various means. So we might be involved in policy developments. It's not uncommon for us to be consulted when new policy is being developed and we sort of feed into that process. We contribute to calls for evidence that come out um, every now and then from the government where they're trying to update policy or, or find out about a particular area and we will feed into that. And we also historically have fed into some of the NICE guidelines in, in this area. 
And then finally, we also have a very big programme of research. So all, um, the majority of the staff at the centre do research as well as part of their roles. Most of our postgraduate students do research if they're on um, a course that involves that. We have our own journal, called the Tizard Learning Disability Review, which is very practitioner focused and aimed at kind of publicising research findings that would be of use to practitioners. We run regular research seminars um, from, and this involves um, sometimes staff from the centre, but more often external experts in the field who are presenting on a particular topic or a particular piece of research they've done. And then we also have two journal clubs and, and they're, they're similar to the research seminars, but much more focused on um, particular articles or particular developments in the field. So we have one focusing on autism and one focusing on behaviour analysis and they're run rel uh, relatively regularly as well. Um, in terms of our kind of recognition, I've already mentioned that we are sort of national and international um, or nationally and internationally recognised in the field and in 2013 we won the Queen's Anniversary Award for Higher Education and that was in recognition of um, quoted our outstanding contribution to improving the lives of people with disabilities and their families so obviously that was a very proud moment for everybody. We also consistently rank highly in the wider school of social policy and, and uh, social research that within which we sit we rank highly for social policy and lead tables and in research ben benchmarks so we we um, perform very well in that area as well. So that's a very sort of crash course into who we are at the CISAD. Obviously, if you have any questions about that, then please let us know. But I'm going to hand over to Vivi now to, to go through the, um, the first part about postgraduate study. Lovely, thank you. So just a uh, well, big welcome for me as well. And oh, just trying to get to the next slide. So what, what we are offering, so we do have a master's in autism studies. Um, that is a, a postgraduate, either a master's or a postgraduate certificate or a postgraduate diploma. Um, depending on what which one you're going for, it's a different amount of credits that you get. And we're gonna talk a bit more about all these later on. Um, we also have the um, MSc, so Master of Science in Analysis and Intervention in Intellectual and Developmental Disabilities. Uh, this one is only um, focusing, it's, it's only campus based, it's not distance learning. Um, and uh, what, what is the unique thing about this, this master's in particular is the placement that is called the clinical and service placement. We also have a master's uh, in IDD, uh, so intellectual and developmental disabilities, and it's also coming in as a certificate or a diploma or a, a VMA. Um, and uh, we also have, Serena, if you want to talk about yeah. the... Yeah, so we also have master's courses in applied behaviour analysis and positive behaviour support, and again, certificates and diplomas as well. Um, and I will talk much more about those later on. Mm -hmm. And a new master's that is coming up, it hasn't started yet, it's starting in September 2023, we're really excited about this, is the master's in uh, intellectual and developmental disabilities and forensic issues, so watch out for that one uh, if you're interested in forensics. So the entry requirements uh, and what, what you need to have. So this year we, we need uh, a recent university degree that is a, uh, is a 2-2 or both and it doesn't matter if it's in the UK or it might be it needs to be equivalent to a 2-2 or both um, however if you don't have a degree uh, again that's okay it doesn't mean that we're not going to consider your application we will but you need to kind of provide us with evidence of your ability to complete that postgraduate program so most of the times we're asking you to do a task uh, if you're falling in that category. Um, international applicants, they are required to have um, UK experience in most circumstances, but again, that's not, that doesn't mean that we're not gonna consider your application. If not, it might be that someone is an international student and they do have experience of autism and learning disabilities in that country, and that would be fine as well. But we do need um, so evidence that your English is okay enough to go through the degree. So we need a, an IELTS or equivalent of seven. Uh, seven altogether or minimum 6.5 in uh, any element. So um, 
if you're falling in one of the categories that your university degree is not very recent or you don't have a 2 two, or it might be that uh, you're an international student and uh, that or you might not have UK experience, then you might be asked to um, to attend a, a, a task. So and um, you know, we're going to be in touch about that if, if you have applied and you are falling in that category. Also, an interview may be required, uh, and that's that's coming after the task. Or it might be that you're going straight into an interview. For more information or more advice, please uh, contact us if you're unsure about uh, how this would work for you or if you have already put in an application and so on. So just to go now into the teaching pattern and how things are uh, working exactly. So uh, the programs, all, all the programs I talked about, we talked about, they're divided into modules. And the teaching is very unique. So in most other universities or in most other programs, you would have weekly, like um, every day of the week or some days of the week teaching, but not with us. So the teaching is clustered in, uh, in monthly, so on a four day workshop weeks. So every month, more or less, not every month, because uh, December is, a, is an odd one, um, but uh, every every month, majority of the cases, we have a four day workshop week. Um, however, that uh, that varies because it might be, it is more for ABA and PBS, but Serena will talk you through that uh, later on. But in general, the all the teaching is clustered uh, in in a, in, a, in the month, really, in that one week. So um, the workshops uh, during the workshops, we've got teaching, we've got seminars, we've got discussions. Some um, some of the modules they're shared between the DSA programs, like the research methods program that is shared between uh, autism, IDD, and uh, the masters of analysis and intervention. And the teaching, if you are campus based, and um, it takes place in class or through web-based resources. So if you're, if you're a distance learning student, obviously you're not expected to be, to be in class, but you are expected to watch everything and catch up with everything uh, later on. Um, distance learning option. So majority, the majority of our courses that do have a distance learning option, that's not possible for the ABA, PBS, or for the analysis and intervention program. So these are all campus-based. And um, if you're taking any of the any of the masters, so the masters then in autism or IDD, if you're taking that as a distance learning student, you don't have to be here for the workshops. But what we are asking you is to come here for the first workshop. Now, um, it used to be that you have to come here for the exam workshop. But we are um, considering things and we're trying to negotiate things with university, whether we could have keep it as a, a remote exam. Um, but but for now, if what, what is attended, it, what, what is what we ask for the distance learning students is that they attend that first workshop because it's the induction workshop and it's it's important that uh, that you get the grasp of the grasp of what we're doing and how we're doing things so after that when when you all go home you have access to the videos of the lectures not only the distance learning students have access to those videos the campus based students also have access to those and um, so we have the recordings we have uh, virtual sessions, we have forum discussions, um, guided reading, uh, and if you're a distance learning student, no other attendance is actually required. Um, now, if you are doing the analysis and intervention program, um, then uh, you are also required to do a placement. There's uh, actually two placements uh, that you're required to do, the service placement and the clinical placement. And we're gonna talk about those in more detail. Um, if you're doing the MA in autism, the IDD, the ABA or the PBS, uh, all the forensic issues, they do not have placement. The only one with a placement is the analysis and intervention one. 
Okay, now a bit of, about the structure and how we assess things. I know that I uh, might not want to know, but some of you very organized people might want to know. So the, co the coursework, the way that we do coursework and we assess your understanding is via essays, is looking at case studies, looking at reports. Uh, you would uh, potentially have to do a presentation or a poster and a dissertation if you're doing uh, the masters. Um, then we also have exams and uh, there, there, there's some essay based exams, so more traditional ones, but, um, but we also have multiple choice questions or short answer questions and information about each one of the modules and what kind of exam you are to expect, uh, you're, you're, you're given guidelines uh, for everything when you when you start with the module. So in order to progress through the program, you require to pass all the modules. So the modules as a whole, and the, the, uh, the pass grade is 50%. So you need to achieve a 50% in order to pass. Okay, now I'm gonna break things down a bit for you. Um, so for people looking at to, to join us for the postgraduate studies in intellectual and developmental disabilities, um, what we do offer, um, we, we do offer the masters, which is uh, 180 credits, and that has the taught modules, it's got an extended essay and a 20,000 word dissertation. Um, we can talk uh, also about the dissertations, the different topics, and all the dissertations that, uh, that the academics were putting uh, forward. They're all things that they're applied, or it might be that uh, they're looking at the literature, but they're all things that there's a real gap in the literature. We're not just doing research just to you know do a piece of work we're doing it to publish so um so that's about the dissertations so the the masters is available uh, part-time or full-time it's available by distance learning or campus-based so you've got all these options with the intellectual and developmental disabilities, the master's, the postgraduate diploma or the certificate. Now with the master's you have those four taught modules, the extended essay and the 20,000 uh, word dissertation. If you're going for the diploma then that is 120 credits and you still have the four taught modules, the extended essay, but the difference here is that your dissertation is uh, significantly less, so it's 10,000 word dissertation. Now, if you're going for the certificate, uh, that's 60 credits and you do not have a dissertation. This whole program, what we want to do is to equip you to have a leading role really in services. And, and um, so to encourage the values, the evidence base, to, be ev to know what evidence based means and uh, how, what, what ethically stringent practice and research looks like. Um, and that's what our aim is. Now, moving on to the analysis and intervention in intellectual and developmental disabilities, that's the master's uh, which is not available by distance learning. You need to be here on campus. Um, and as I said, that doesn't mean that, um, so, so you, you have to be here for the workshops really, not on campus all the time, but for the workshops. So those four days, if you're full time, or if you're part time, that means that uh, only two or three days, depending on whether you're in the first year or the second year of your studies. Um, so that is a campus based program though. And uh, you also have the two placements. You have a service placement and a clinical placement. Um, those uh, we're going to talk a bit more about those placements later on, and I'm going to explain a bit more about those. Um, that masters is available part time or full time, but please, please, please make sure that you're not working uh, if you're taking this full time. People, uh, people that tried that in the past. Um, that didn't work out well. Part-time students that uh, want to do the work uh, full-time, that doesn't work either. If you're a part-time student, you can work part-time, but you cannot work full-time. So if you're doing this master's full-time, you cannot be working. If you're doing it part-time, that's okay. You can work part-time, not full-time, please. 
So the students uh, in this in this program, they have assessments, they design interventions, they're looking at outcomes, they adjust the interventions, and they are working with service within service within the service level, so with services, but also with the individuals. Um, so we are actually giving you an experience of practice, really, in, into what it is um, what, what it means to be there and actually intervening with things in practice or training and so on, and uh, what it means by conducting, conducting research in the field. So you've got the MSc uh, option, which is the four modules, the extended essay, the two placements, and the 10,000 word dissertation, or you could go for the postgraduate diploma, uh, which does not have a dissertation. Now, regarding the placements, we have the service placement, the, that uh, service placement is the first one that you come into and is the first six months uh, for full time students or uh, for the first year for part time students. This is uh, one that we organise from TZAD, actually all placements we organise and um, the students then for that placement, they work in teams, so they go into services and assess, uh, assess the service really. We, you would need a DBS check for that and uh, you would need to cover the travel expenses to go to the placement. This year that service placement uh, was in Medway, not very sure where it's going to be next year but it's not going to be uh, very far. Then um, the second placement uh, is the clinical placement that runs from Easter to September for, for, for the students, uh, for full-time students and uh, it runs in the second year uh, for the part-time students and the students will normally spend two or three days per week working on their clinical placement from Easter onwards, so around April really, and that would add up to a total of 44 uh, days. So um, you, need, you need a DPS check for, those, for both those placements and, um, and that is why it's not really possible for you to work full time and complete these modules. So uh, keep that in mind when you are applying, please. Now, um, I wanted to talk about autism studies. Uh, this is available as a campus-based program, but also as a distance learning program. Um, again, for all those programs, you cannot really be studying full-time and take it and working full-time. Uh, you could work part-time and uh, do a part-time study, uh, but all the programs that we've got, all the masters, they're so demanding um, and we don't want to see you failing really, we want to support you to have a nice experience. Um, the program uh, will provide you with a detailed knowledge of autism and uh, we'll be touching upon other developmental disabilities as well and uh, looking at assessment, looking at intervention in, in the field of autism, but also uh, if you're doing the masters, then uh, you will be able to do research as well. So the masters, for, if you're doing the masters, you'll have to do the five top modules, the extended essay. You also have a case study here and your dissertation. If you're going for the diploma, you have the uh, taught modules, the extended essay and the case study. So you don't have a dissertation. And if you're going for the certificate, you do have the four modules and the extended essay. What I wanted to say that I haven't said before is that, you know, if you do go for the postgraduate certificate and then later on, you'll see that mm, perhaps, you know, I really like this. I think I can do it. Talk to talk to your tutor and decide that actually, you know, I want to give a go to the masters. That would be possible for you to do as well. So just something to keep in mind. And um, finally, the postgraduate study in IDD and forensic in issues. This is starting in September 2023. Um, it's an advanced professional development program. Um, so, so it's giving you really detailed knowledge and the understanding of intellectual and developmental disabilities, but also forensic issues. Uh, looking at etiology, assessment, treatment of offending behavior, um, and the legal policy framework and in, into working with pe people in this setting, really. So, so it's looking at your professional practice, but also the service issues connected to those. 
and you would need experience of practice or um, conducting research in the field. So, so uh, something to look forward to uh, that one uh, starting in 2023. Um, this, is, this is from me. And these are the, um, you know, it's all the information. Please follow us on Twitter and uh, emails if you if you have any any questions. Um, I'm going to stop here and I'm going to stop sharing um, and give a bit of time for questions, if that's OK, and uh, perhaps. Really sorry about the PowerPoint at the beginning. Uh, I thought I shared it. So everybody's saying, I can't see the <laughs> PowerPoint. How are we defining recent? Um, so, so one of the questions is, how are we defining re recent? So I guess that is for your, for your degree. So in the re recent would be in the past five years. But it doesn't matter if you don't have a degree in the past five years, that would mean that um, if you have all the rest, if you tick all the rest of the boxes, then that would just mean that you have to go through the task. And uh, if you if you pass that, then you can go to the next level. So don't don't be put off by that. The PhD programs. No, I'm afraid we're not going to be covering the PhD programs today. Uh, but uh, normally, what, what you would need to do if, when if you're looking for a PhD program, please look on our website. And uh, I would say email Michelle McCarthy, uh, who is the uh, PhD uh, convener. Uh, and also, if you if you have a topic in mind, I would uh, email the um, you know the the academic that. Uh, that might be interested in it. Um, what are the career opportunities for the forensic masters? I'm afraid, Holly, I'm afraid, I'm afraid I have to um, pass that question on to, uh, to a colleague of mine that uh, is developing. So the, the program is has been um, we have the okay from university, but we are developing uh, the program. So I'm not I'm not an expert on that program. Uh, so I have to pass on your question if that's okay about the forensic uh, masters. Um. So for, for career developments, I've got a speech and language therapist uh, here that is asking uh, whether the master's program will help build on uh, their career. Um, it, 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 I would say it would because it would give you that um, knowledge on service uh, on services. Um, it would give you it wouldn't give you um, information really on as a as a speech and language therapist as such so it wouldn't be giving you um you know sessions on 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 um play time or you know floor play or anything like that but it, we would cover um the case study say for for uh, autism for the autism masters or if you are doing the MSc in analysis and intervention it would give you that clinical experience so so that would um you know that that applied knowledge really so yes do yeah. you want to <clears throat> yeah just something? one thing i would add to that we do have a speech and language therapist here yes. um it's jill dr jill bradshaw um, and i'm sure she would be very happy to talk to you about how um you know her role has developed um through this this sort of work so feel free to email her you can find her email address on the website Um, so I have someone uh, from from Germany here wanting to take the pro the the program. Um, yes, please, um, please, please do apply. We just need to see see your transcripts. Uh, you you would certainly need a, a an IELTS test or equivalent just for to to know that you can um, you know assessing the understanding of the English language, and then we can take it from there. Um, please do, please, please do apply. 
Yeah, and, and just to add for any international or EU applicants, there, there's nothing about be, not being based in the UK that would mean you have less of a chance of getting onto the course. It's about demonstrating your ability to study at postgraduate level, your passion and interest for the field. So why this master's versus another master's really, and um, just your um, experience in the field. So if you're a speech and language therapist in Germany, you probably have lots of very relevant experience to draw on. So just highlight that for us in your application. Yeah, certainly, certainly. There's another question about what is the difference between the MA and the MSc, so the Masters of Arts uh, and compared to the Masters of Science is the placement. Uh, basically, that's what it is. And with the Masters of Science, you would need to, for your dissertation, you would need to go out there and collect data. Whereas with the Masters of Arts, you could do a, a non-empirical study. So you could do a research of the literature. It, with a Master of Science, you would need to go out there and collect empirical data, uh, either in services, with individuals, and so on. The forensic studies is part time only. Um, so I, I think so. I can't really. Sorry. Yeah, I, I can't, can't remember, remember on, on that front <laughs> because, it, because it's a program that's so not sorry. running just yet. The, the details are, are less clear in our minds. But um, perhaps you could look that up while yes. uh, while I'm talking. If this is yes, someone yes. who's going to stay on, or we can confirm it in an email afterwards. Yeah. Um, or I can email uh, the person. Yeah. If, if. But I do think that it's part time. Yeah. Okay. Um. For, so someone is working full time and there's no opportunities uh, to access these courses. If you're working full time, it would be very, very demanding. I would, I would suggest that you drop your days and uh, go to part time. And um, even if that means that uh, you drop your days to uh, three mm -hmm. or even four, if you're you know, yeah. um, thinking of a person's weekend as well. But there's no way that I would say that you would be able to actually do the work in a level that is not going to be so stressful for mm. you to actually uh, achieve your master's. Yeah. The, the only other thing I would add is that if you do have a, an incredibly supportive employer who is able to not only release you for the workshops, but also for time to work on your assignments, I mean, that's the key thing, really. Lots of people, I think, look at it as the workshop weeks they need to find time for, which it obviously is a big part of it, but outside of the workshop weeks, you will be working on your assignments, your dissertation, all of the other options, which is why we say not to work full time alongside it. If your employer is incredibly supportive and is willing to release you for a good chunk of time to work on that. But as Vivi says, the, the, the best option really is to try and drop your days if you're able to. Um, another question is about uh, what are the majority of students that we get, uh, whether they're international students or UK students. Um, the, the majority of the campus-based students, I would say they're from the UK, but uh, we do have some international students that they do join us uh, on campus. Um, the majority, though, of the uh, distance learning students uh, are, are, are international students. Not, not that we don't have, we have had people from the UK uh, also joining us as distance learners because, you know, family issues, work issues, you know, they couldn't be here uh, for the workshops. I would say that pattern is slightly different for ABA PBS in that the majority of our campus students are, uh, well, the majority of people that live on campus are international students. Everybody for the ABA PBS courses is a campus based student because we don't offer it by distance learning. But it's really common for people to kind of live across the UK and just travel down for the workshop weeks. So we do have a good chunk, I would say, of, of international and, and EU applicants. And I think that's because of our, our kind of position in the field, really. Yeah. Um, there's another question about, um, I guess, um, it's about the Masters in Analysis and Intervention and whether um, your work supervisor, uh, or trained at the DZ Centre, glad to hear that, uh, be able to provide clinical supervision. Yes, I guess for the clinical, um, for the clinical placement, yes, that has happened before. It would just need to be, um, we would just need to discuss this uh, at the time and make, make the arrangements needed. But yes, that has happened before. No, are the initial workshops for one day only, someone has asked. No, the initial workshops are a, um, a full week 
uh, so, so that induction, that first workshop, if you're a distance learning student and you would have to, um, we would like you to come and, and join us. It's uh, one full week if you're a full-time student or three days if you're a part-time student. Um, for the for the courses that VB's talking about, yes, just to that's, say this is different for the ABA. Courses. Yes, yes, but yeah. we, we just only talked about yeah. those uh, BBS ABA that are coming up later. Um, I, can we please? Uh, yeah. We're going to cover all the ABA questions after the ABA um, uh, presentation. Um, Canadian students need the English test as well. Um, I think if they're, I, I don't think so, but if you, I'm not a hundred percent sure from the admissions. If you go on the um, main Kent University website and type in English language requirements, it will bring up all the requirements for um, our postgraduate courses. And there is a list of countries that are exempt. I think Canada is probably in that um, in that list, but you can find that list on there. Obviously, we will check this for every applicant anyway, so we wouldn't ask you to do an English language test if you're if you're from a country that is exempt. Okay. And um, someone is asking me to define a good chunk of time that would be required on a daily basis, but it all depends whether you're a um, full time or part time student. Uh, if you're a full time student. I would I would treat that as a full time job, really. I would uh, I would you would need to give uh, at least like thirty to thirty five hours uh, per week. I would treat it as a full time job, and the same if you're a part time student. I would treat that as a part time job. That's the same. There. Yeah. I think I think the key thing to remember is that you're you that to get the most out of your degree. It's not just about doing your assignments and passing them. You know, you want to pass them. Uh, with, with a very good grade, uh, as I'm sure you all probably do as you're applying postgraduate study, but also you're, what's going to enrich your studies the most is by immersing yourself in the reading and the literature and the policy, and it's that kind of stuff that really takes the time. Um, and so it's not just the physical time writing your assignments, it's all the research and reading that you'll be doing around it, so that's why we say it's, it takes a, a lot of time and, and yeah, it should be treated as a full-time or part-time job, depending on how you're studying. There's a question about PhD, I know that we're not discussing PhDs, but I'm going to answer that, um, asking whether they can do a PhD with an MA uh, qualification, and yes, you can do, uh, there's no restrictions uh, whether you have an MA or an MSc, so go for it. Um, I'm not sure if we're open for PhDs for the time being, but uh, have a look out on our website uh, to see uh, PhD opportunities. Okay. Um. So we, we just to say we, we have someone in the um, chat box who has studied with us before and has said they can vouch for the need of not working full time while studying full time. So thank you for that. That's someone <laughs> who's got first hand experience of this. <laughs> okay, I think I'm gonna um, pass pass this on to you Serena yes. now to yeah um, so, so anyone who's who's not interested in the ABA and PBS courses you're, you're welcome to leave at this point if you don't we're not going to go through any anything more general again um but of course if you have any other questions you've got the email addresses that you can um, contact us by so please feel free to send over any other questions um I think sorry. we need to do the screen share as well yeah 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 okay sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> trying to steal the mouse from me um so we need to Screen two, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Um, thank you, everybody. Um, oh, hang on, it's not. No, it's not that one. Oh. Yeah. That's okay. It. Can you see the the slides now? Please give me a shout if you can't. Um, we think you can. You can. Um, so I'm going to talk about the Applied Behaviour Analysis and Positive Behaviour Support courses, um, because that's the, the courses that I'm most involved in, involved in. And the idea of those courses really is about providing graduates with um, detailed knowledge of behaviour analysis uh, with a particular focus of, on behaviour analytic work with individuals who have an intellectual or developmental disability. Um, and that's a really unique element of our course, really. It's not, we're not just teaching you about behaviour analysis, we're teaching you about how it applies to the field of intellectual and developmental disabilities. I'm just going to see if I can. So I know we've already mentioned this, um, but there is no distance learning option or placement on this course. 
Um, in the past couple of years, we have, um, because of the pandemic, we have had to move it online temporarily. But the reason there's no distance learning option normally is because we are accredited with Applied Behaviour Analysis International. And I'll talk a bit more about what that means later. Um, but we are accredited as a campus-based course. And so normally distance learning is not an option. There's just been an exception made during the pandemic, really. Similarly with placements, we don't offer placements on, on this course. Full time, it just wouldn't be possible. You would not have time to engage in a placement. I believe you already mentioned that there are more workshops on our course. And again, I'll go through that later. Um, part time students who want to take a practice route through the course are generally students who are already working in settings. And so we've just found that the offering a placement is not, is not um, of interest most of the time to the students who take these courses. One thing to say is that there, there are courses in ABA and courses in positive behaviour support. The taught content is exactly the same, regardless of which programme you're registered on. And again, that's because we are accredited to provide a certain, a certain taught content to you. The differentiation is made in the dissertation and work-based learning that you do, um, in that PBS students will take a much more PBS focus in, in those pieces of work. Um, so just to be aware, the talk content is the same and the dissertation is where, where the difference <coughs> lies. So there isn't, so we have um, those, those different courses, as I mentioned. So there's the MSc, the Postgraduate Diploma and the Postgraduate Certificate. But the Postgraduate Diploma and Certificate are only in ABA and not in PBS. And again, it's because the talk content is the same. So there's no real differentiation there. And both of those, the Postgraduate Certificate and the Postgraduate Diploma are full time only. The Masters can be full time or part time. Obviously, part time is over two years, full time is in one year. Part time is not available to international students, and that's usually based, based on visa requirements. Um, part time students, we've already said, can continue to work part time, um, but it is still quite demanding, but it is quite common to do that um, and work the, uh, to do, take the practice route through the course. Full time students cannot work, there just would not be time. Full time students have sometimes in the past taken very time limited. Um, placements or work in in um, particular settings but it's time limited it's a few weeks only and a few hours a week only trying to work part-time routinely along full-time just will not work so the, the three courses the master's is 180 credits and you have seven modules on the master's plus either a dissertation of 8,000 words or a work-based project of 5,000 words plus a video and I'll go through those in a minute the diploma is 140 credits and you've just got the seven modules, so no dissertation or work-based learning. The certificate is 100 credits and you just have the five core modules. And again, there's no uh, dissertation or work-based learning for that option. So you have, I, I've already mentioned a practice pathway through the course. So what, what do I mean? So you have different options at taking the course. So you can either take a theoretical route or a practical route. Um, we find it's really common for students to want to gain practical experience to consolidate their learning and we actively encourage this um, to, to try and take a practice route where you can. It's available to postgraduate certificate students or part time students only so if you're on the diploma or if you're a full time student you won't have time to do any additional work outside of your study so the practice route is not available to you but postgraduate certificate or part time students it is available. And the idea of this is that you're working with an individual with IDD or autism, or you're working within systems that support people with IDD or autism, such as with individuals, families or support staff. And that's quite common for the PBS students to, to take that route. Um, and you will work with that individual for a series of assignments through the course. So the assignments mirror the kind of work you would normally do, an assessment, a plan for support, implementing that and evaluating that. Students are responsible for identifying a suitable person or people to work with for the practice route and gaining consent. So we don't arrange that for you. You are responsible for arranging that and identifying someone. The theory pathway, if you're not able to take the practice route or you don't want to take the practice route, there is a theory pathway. The assessment pattern is very similar. So we will provide you with videos and data um, following assessment and development of a plan and evaluation of that. But it's based on a theoretical or hypothetical case study rather than in practice. Uh, following that, you have options about a dissertation or work based learning. And this is only re obviously relevant to the master's students because they're, they're not part of the other courses. Um, essentially, as a master's student, you will complete an independent project as part of your course. If you're full time, this must be a non empirical dissertation. So something like a systematic review of the literature because you will not, again, you will not have time to get through ethics and go out and collect data if you're studying full time. 
If you're a part-time student, you can either do a dissertation, which can be empirical, where you go out and collect some data, or it can be non-empirical, so like a systematic review again. And the work for this is spread across both years. So you'll start working on it in year one and you'll carry on working throughout the course of your degree. However, if you're part time and you went through the practice route of the course in year one, you can opt to take a work based learning route rather than a dissertation, which involves an extended case study. So it's similar to the practice route assignments, but it's extended with a different individual in a different service context. Um, and that's done in year two after you've done all of your practice uh, work in year one. So just a, a note on the study commitments, I've already mentioned about there not being a distance learning option. Um, the exception was just during the pandemic, so we expect it to return to campus based in September. Um, similarly to the other courses at Tizard, we teach in workshop weeks and our weeks on the ABA and PBS course are either four or five days long. There might also be a couple of additional sessions here and there for supervision and, and things like that. Because we are accredited, I mean, attendance on all the courses is compulsory, but because we are accredited, we actively monitor attendance and require compensation for any missed, missed sessions. So it's really important that you plan to make the time to attend those sessions. And if you want a bit of information about what it looks like year to year, you can send us an email and I can send over an, an indicative timetable. There are 15 workshops overall on the ABA and PBS courses, 11 for postgraduate certificate students, all completed within the same year. Um, for part-time master students, you have 10 workshops in year one and five in year two. So that's something to bear in mind. The study commitment is slightly more in year one for part-time students. And the reason for that is that we need to give you lots of foundational knowledge to take a practice route through the course. And so the 10 workshops are really core information that you need in order to do that, that um, practice route. And then in year two, the, the time outside of your workshops is spent on your work-based learning on your dissertation. So the time is, is kind of um, weighted towards that really. Obviously full-time master students or diploma students do all 15 workshops in, within um, the one year. So finally, um, in terms of accreditation, I mentioned we're accredited by ABAI. What that means is that the postgraduate diploma and the master's options incorporate a verified course sequence for the Behaviour Analyst Certification Board, fifth edition task list. Um, and you might be aware of what this means or you might not. Essentially, this means it meets coursework requirements for those who are seeking certification as a board certified behaviour analyst. Um, so these courses will provide the coursework that you need for to be eligible for that. There are other requirements to be eligible for that as well. So there will be degree and experience requirements. If you take the master's, you've met the degree requirement as well. But if you take the diploma, you would need an alternative master's level qualification. Um, and there are experience requirements as, as well. So please don't think that doing the course makes you immediately eligible. It just it meets that requirement about the um, coursework. Another thing to be aware of is that the BACB will stop offering exams in the UK by 2025. So those residing in the UK who, seek, who are seeking certification need to ensure that you meet all of those requirements and pass the exam by the end of 2024. However, the UK Society for Behaviour Analysis is developing an alternative credentialing system, which of course we will um, make sure we meet <laughs> within, a course, within the course for the UK. So, so watch this space if you're interested in becoming a certified professional. So just to make you aware of those elements. So I'm going to stop the share here again and cover any questions that have come up about the ABA and PBS courses. Um, so I think I've already covered the question about why it's not possible to do um, distance learning for the ABA courses. Um, so I'm just going to check whether there are any other questions that come through. Um, and there haven't been so far, so I'll just wait a moment to see if anybody um, wants to raise any questions from any of that. In the meantime, can I please check uh, about the forensic? Yes, absolutely. That's interesting. Yeah. So I'm guessing it might be that we've covered the main questions through the original question A. Um, so someone's asking from applying, when do you find out if you got onto the course? Is there a date? There isn't a specific date. It's about when we kind of process your application and go through from there. So it, it can be any time really um, up until uh, sort of up until July when the, the cutoff is or just after July. So if you apply now, you will find out sooner than that. But I can't give you a, a date, unfortunately, about when when you will hear back. 
And just to answer the question about the forensic masters, yes, it is um, distance learning, part-time only. And it starts in September, 2023. Um, so I can see another question, how often do you need to attend on part-time masters? Um, so the, you have those 10 workshops in year one, they're roughly once a month, um, although very occasionally there's two workshops within the same month or close together. Um, and then in year two, it's five workshops. This is where um, an indicative timetable would be useful. So feel free to send an email through and I can send that out to you because then you can see roughly where the workshop weeks fall. They only tend to vary by a day or two each year. So it'll give you a bit of a better idea about the attendance requirements. And that could be available as well for the for anyone that is interested about the um, autism, uh, intellectual and developmental disabilities or analysis and intervention uh, masters postgraduate courses if you need an indicative timetable let me know and um I, I can make that available for you obviously we haven't got the exact dates yet for yes, next year yeah, the dates will um, change but. but uh but you can see where they fall more or less uh, they, they don't tend to um yeah to alter a lot yeah absolutely is anyone in the department interested in brain injury in pbs that's a very interesting question i mean i don't I, uh, speaking personally, because I'm interested in positive behaviour support myself, it's not something I wouldn't be interested in, but I guess something to be aware of is that because this course is focused on intellectual and developmental disabilities, any work you do through the course would have to be related to that. So normally things like traumatic brain injury or acquired brain injury don't come under that category because they're not, um, they don't have that developmental element to them. So it's not that we wouldn't be interested or supportive of a focus on brain injury, but you just would need to have a focus on IDD within that as well. I'll just wait a moment to see if any other questions are coming kind of through. Uh, do I have any recommended books? I'm assuming this is for the ABA and PBS courses. Um, I'd suggest maybe sending me an email and I can send you I can send you a couple of ideas rather than um, trying to for you trying to write them all down and <laughs> find them all from me saying it here. Um, but yes, very happy to, to send over some recommended books. And the same goes <laughs> yeah, for, the, for the other courses as well. For the other courses, yes. Uh, email me if you uh, if you require any reading. Uh, and just to say, we really encourage anyone who's interested in getting started on reading. That's a really good thing to do. <laughs> ah, thank you. I can see that um, the email address has gone into the chat there. Might take a bit more time to type in my name. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, I'm thinking, shall we just uh, resume and, uh, yes. and we can um, just show you the last slide of just, you know, covering everything, <coughs> you know, for the final time. Yes. And then if you do have any more questions, anything comes up, uh, please feel free to email us. And uh, if you don't know the answer, I'm sure that we will, but we'll find out. Yes, definitely. Um, okay, so... This, there's nothing um, new on the, this screen that you haven't seen before, but it's just kind of a recap. Um, sorry, I've messed up the screen, that's okay. <laughs> Two seconds. Okay. Um, so just, just as a recap of, of the courses, just to remind you what we've been through, we spoke about the um, Masters in Autism Studies, the Masters in IDD, both of which also have a certificate and a diploma option, the Masters in Analysis and Intervention in IDD, which has a diploma option as well, and those clinical and service placements, the Masters in IDD and Forensic Issues, which is distance learning or part-time only, which isn't starting yet, starting in September 2023, and again has certificate or diploma options. And then finally, we went through the masters in ABA and PBS, both of which are campus only, but you do have certificate or diploma options there as well, and no placements or inter internships, but that you can opt to take a practice route through the course if you're a part time student and working in a relevant setting. So this is just the, the final slide, which gives you the emails for further information, again, in case you didn't get a chance to write those down. So I'll leave it on this for a second. 
and then I'll check out those any final questions and just to say again please follow us on on Facebook or Twitter and our YouTube channel because we quite often post really relevant information that you um, might be interested in as potential applicants mm -hmm. and all of seminars are on the yes channel. That, yes that's and I think way. this um this recording will this be will there be yeah yeah absolutely okay so that's it from us thank you everybody I'm just going to check whether there have been any final questions um while I've been talking there and there haven't so as I, as we said before please feel free to email over any questions and thank you very much for attending and listening I hope that you um I hope to see your applications coming through <laughs> thank you bye everyone bye